to the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt in a meeting with Palastatos under his oversight, retreated his commitment to ensure that government ministries, departments and agencies make judicious use of loans contracted, as well as discouraged governments from borrowing under the platform of development policy operations. I would still like you to enlighten us the more on what I've said earlier. First of all, what is the current debt profile of Nigeria with regards to the issue of the World Bank? And then I will also like you to give us your own thoughts on the key reforms needed in our economy so that this debt that has been piled up could be serviced from your own uh, experience as, a, as an institution. And then uh, in one of your pillars, which is agriculture, what I would like to draw your attention to is that um, locally successive governments in Nigeria have made heavy investment on agriculture. But in most times, the peasant farmers have not in any way appreciably have not benefited from such heavy sum of money. Year in, year out, you hear billions of naira and hundreds of millions of dollars allocated to agriculture. But when you go back to our villages, it's still the same rudimentary way of planting and harvest, you see. Now, as you shift towards making emphasis on agriculture, how do you emphasize on protecting the peasant local farmers in the face of retired civil servants, generals, and big tycoons setting up farms that don't in any way uh, contribute much compared to what our peasant farmers do. <coughs> and I also say here on your emphasis on power, uh, do you have specific areas of interest? Perhaps, uh, is it, are you still going to emphasize on hydroelectric or you are ready to make investment on solar energy, um, possibly nuclear energy as a source of power or coal. And then I also like to know on this issue of solid minerals, the activities of um, illegal miners and unregistered miners uh, is a serious problem in this our country. In one of the states in the north, like Zamfara State, we have had cases of people taking advantage of the neglect of the industry uh, with the hazard of lead poisoning, killing uh, a number of people. Now, how do you, as a body, though I know it still remains uh, areas of interest before we, how do you uh, finance small-scale miners in this kind of uh, business. And on the last note, I would still like to have your opinion on the, your recommendation on the key uh, areas that our economy need to be attended to seriously. Uh, what are the reforms that are needed in our economy? What direction do we, from your own uh, experience, think we should uh, take in this challenging moment in our country's history? Uh, these are unusual times. In the last 50 years of our political independence, government have been used to presiding over the state and powered by all resources. Now we are having a government that is 
at the gate of the end of an era of oil. So, and I'm, I'm happy you have a two-year program to take emphasis on the new focus in the country, which is diversifying the economy. So your ideas here will be of help to us, so as to advise those who are collecting money on how they can also, uh, the, 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 the strategy they need to take to be able to pay or service such money. Thank you. Cassava. And in turn, because there was no commercial market for that, most of the cassava are turned to be firewood. Because they know where they have nowhere to, you know, market this. Not only just to produce, but I believe that if the World Bank is thinking of assisting the, our local farmers, we should also provide markets where these products are supposed to be consumed. If it is done this way, it will go a long way in encouraging them and getting themselves into farming. And take another uh, area of it again. You see, most of our local farmers, if you go to the Middle Belt site here, we engage mostly on food and uh, the fruits like mangoes, guavas, but there's no preservation of such uh, items. Now, they will be putting much of their efforts. This is a perennial crops. These mangoes, you take five, three years in producing those, and yet when the harvest is due, there is no always market for it, and they go about being wasted. So I think we should have a preservative mechanism to encourage these farmers on how to preserve such uh, items of food crops in the processing is. By such doing, you will discover that, yes, we have a lot of income into this country. And that would go a long way in servicing the debt we are collecting without any further delay. Look at, uh, we, I'll take us back again into this uh, cotton that we had in the time past. Most of the it, our textile industries are closed down because of the raw materials. And these raw materials, we have them locally. Because when you travel to other countries that you see, they, they lack even rain. Nigeria is endowed with a lot of natural resources that are yet to be tapped. We want the World Bank to, to look into that area and see how a research could be made so that we can sustain that which we have lost and bring back the glory of our textile industry in this country. But by the time we do such things, I have that belief that the facility or the depths we are going to collect will really serve the purpose of being a leverage and not a, uh, a, 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 a maybe national king where people doesn't have something that they want to invest in. They go back into it and just get the facilities and do other things. We are so much committed to this nation and we want to see to be seen in doing that by putting our input and rubbing mine, brainstorming with you so that we can profound a lasting solution to this neglected uh, aspect of our uh, resources <coughs> and our revenues. Thank you. I will be happy to have in-depth discussion uh, so that I can uh, be able to respond to those because whatever we do as a World Bank uh, group is to be supportive of the government on reform priorities areas. It's not about what we want, it's about what the government wants to do, and we help the government in the implementation of the policies and reform uh, actions. So, um, so therefore, what the government has outlined going forward 
uh, it, it appears to be very uh, an important way of the, uh, forward for Nigeria's peace and prosperity. And I, I can summarize them into three areas. The first, uh, the first area is security for all Nigerian. Second, create, uh, uh, resolving the unemployment issue. And third, uh, bringing governance and transparency uh, on all the, uh, the public sector. So these are the three areas that the government has outlined. Uh, there are many more areas, but I just try to summarize them into some uh, very high level impact uh, level so that we can see how, what we do in order to help address each one of them. So uh, certainly when we talk about unemployment, we talk about growth. And when we want to talk about growth, we talk about investment and job creation both on capital investment, but also on the human uh, capital. So it's both have to be together in order for you to create uh, 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 growth and employment. But growth cannot happen without looking at the domestic market. How to create a domestic market that is competitive, that can uh, create the necessary uh, uh, jobs and the jobs are not going to be created on the public sector but will be created in the in the private sector and therefore wh what kind of uh, access to financing uh, the private sector has what kind of investment climate that is conducive for the private sector and when we talk about private sector i'm not this uh, making a distinction between public, uh, domestic or foreign it's about the private sector in general need to be part of the solution and need to foster an, an, an environment that is conducive for it. And the third pillar is about the governance, in, which is a government, uh, the governance of the, uh, of the public sector for the people. So that's, uh, that's the whole aspect of uh, efficiency in the uh, spending is really critical and how it's not only efficiency in the spending but also transparency and accountability for the uh, for the spending. So, um, so therefore, I am just giving you a, a very broad, high-level uh, uh, thing, uh, level um, outcome that we do subscribe in trying to supporting the government uh, in their effort to address uh, the three. Um, your, Excell uh, Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Chairman, and honourable uh, senators, um, I think. Uh, what you have said uh, really touched my heart when you talk about agriculture, because agriculture is the best way to reach the poor. Uh, and this is where a number of uh, uh, activities need to be done. And it, agriculture is also help create the equity in, in the uh, allocation of resources. And it's not about the big farmer, it is about for the small farmer. They need to be able to address, to be able to find uh, programs that addresses their need. And the project that we do always deal with the small farmers uh, so that they are able to ha have access to first information about what they can do about technology of diversification, uh, in terms of diversification, agricultural intensification, so that they can have a higher agricultural productivity. But it will not be sufficient because it's only at the farm gate, but they need much more through rural roads, through connectivity, through building markets, so that they can link the farmers to the market. Uh, we will be leaving uh, with you uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman and Honorable Senator, a series of uh, project briefs where we describe every single project that we have and what has been the result that we have been able to achieve in the project that we have already in place so that you, you can link the input and the, uh, to the output. And uh, I just give you, we have a project called the FADAMA project, which is a, a project specially for agriculture and a commercial agriculture development project, where EU, we literally have a number of uh, results that you can see 
how many agriculture have been able to access to financing, access to innovation technology and improve their productivity. And these are all small, uh, small farmers. So um, you, you, you have touched upon an important subject is that agriculture is, 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 uh, has to be a commercial business because it has to provide a livelihood opportunities. For that, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, what we have to be looking is how you bring, uh, how you bring back agriculture where it was to be. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was told that Nigeria was a food exporter. Now it is a food importer. Uh, it is importing about uh, three billion dollar worth of food. Uh, so how one can actually try to uh, produce those goods and try to have uh, these goods internally. And it's also not about only the goods themselves, but how do you package them so that they can be uh, sold in different uh, markets. This is why uh, uh, the Honorable Senator talked about preservation, uh, uh, which is really critical for movement of the goods uh, from one place to the other. But uh, an agriculture uh, country like uh, Nigeria will not be uh, competitive without having a solid research center on agricultural technology. I mean, this is extremely important to try to and always be at the forefront in looking at how one can product, uh, improve the productivity of certain crop, or how one can look at the various uh, crops, problems, and issues. And there is uh, uh, the knowledge base here to develop uh, uh, agricultural research. Um, on, the, uh, on the issue of energy, as you know, we are not involved in nuclear. We don't do that. Uh, but we will be certainly involved in, uh, in solar energy. We have already uh, two, uh, two projects that is done by our sister organization, International, uh, IFC, International Finance Corporation. And we have a, an initiative that we would like to do in Africa, which is the one gigawatt solar in the Sahel countries. So this is an important initiative that the Africa region of the World Bank is trying to aim to develop. Renewable energy overall, whether it is wind or solar, we will be looking at it. On uh, solid mineral, um, um, there, are, there are a number of issues in the solid mineral sector. One is it's a sector that has been neglected. Uh, and it is now uh, important to invest uh, in it. There are a number of uh, knowledge gap that is uh, exist in terms of uh, where are the different deposits. You have also talked about the, it is quite informal uh, sector. The question is how one can bring the sector into an informal, uh, from the informality to the formality so that they can become much more uh, viable and have an access to financing uh, and that we need to create even an incentive for helping the farmers to uh, sorry the miners to move through the to the uh, uh, to the formal sector it is certainly small scale uh, and sometimes when you are a small scale a miner you may not be able to access the financing but if you one can create cooperatives of uh, small miners together they can access the financing so looking at for how one create cooperative is, is, is one element of uh, the analysis the second thing is that uh, the mining sector uh, has a number of governance issues uh, that need to be addressed which is the fact that uh, the the mineral uh, within a, a state is a federal subject uh, whereas the land is the state's uh, subject. So you need to create the incentives between both at the federal and the state level so that one can uh, mine uh, in, a, in a specific uh, state, how one can bring and provide concession, which is at the federal level, in a state where the, the resources are taken from. That is, a, uh, it is something that needs to be uh, addressed. Uh, and the mining sector is also, you have said, uh, your, your Excellency, that it is uh, 
quite in, informal and many of them are uh, small for uh, mining uh, miners. Are, we can even call them artisanal mining. So 90% I was told, I know I, this is the figure that I have read, that are uh, uh, small scale. So this is, uh, again, they are, we need to study those, try to find what are the incentives again to convert them from informal to formal. These are incentives that we need to look at. I think we need to have a series of consultations with the various uh, miners, the various uh, groups and associations, and to find from them what would it take to move from the informal to the formal. It might be that just the, 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 some of the incentives uh, can be helpful to them. Uh, we are still in the we are still at the early stage. We just have started this discussion only a week ago, but my sense it is going to be a very much a promising, uh, promising uh, um, uh, area for development. One also has to realize that the mining sector is not only about the small mine, but also the big mine uh, and the large mine, and that you requires. Uh, uh, large investment, the, and especially when you have very uh, low commodity prices, the question that always arises is why one will invest in a mining sector now, in light of low commodity prices. That, and that is where one that, uh, has to create the investment climate for the private sector to invest now in other countries. So we share the knowledge first, and then it will become uh, a Nigerian solution in the sense the local government, uh, the, the government will decide as to what it would be best for them uh, within the constitutional framework for within uh, uh, for the mining sector. You, uh, excellent, see you, uh, Mr. Chairman and honourable uh, uh, senators. You also mentioned about the debt profile of Nigeria. Uh, I know that it. The, I don't have the numbers, but I'm happy to communicate them to you later. But the debt profile for, is mostly domestic debt than foreign debt. It's still very small. I think the debt percentage to, to the debt to GDP ratio, I, I, it's a very uh, small compared to other countries. But I would not want to put the, uh, the, the, the public figure right now. If you allow me, I can come back to the Senate with the exact composition of the debt, if it, you permit me. Uh, enlightening, in the sense that uh, we are impressed that you are now re-strategizing uh, to conform to the spirit of the times. Uh, whatever the World Bank can do to assist and help the country to realize its diversification agenda will be very much helpful. The world is moving away from oil and uh, emphasis is on other areas of revenue generation. And certainly, solid minerals, agriculture, and power are key areas that will be of use and economic value to Nigeria in the years and years to come. And um, this committee will always want your attention your presence, and we pledge to work with the World Bank uh, in the execution of our oversight function. As much as you are concerned about the money that is collected from you, we are also concerned about how such monies are being used. Uh, whoever collects loan, whether domestic or foreign, he is doing it on behalf of uh, this generation and the future generation. And we owe it a duty to the next generation to keep a note on what we have done with such monies and also 
how we leave behind a template for payment or servicing as a technical word. It is. Uh, we are concerned, and this committee made up of eminent uh, senators was carefully selected to address this very issue. Uh, as much as the government is committed towards doing things differently, we are also determined to work along that direction. The era of collecting domestic or foreign loan to construct amusement for parks in Nigeria and also use it for okay. events, issues or projects that will, is of no value uh, is over. We want the future generations of Nigerians to look back and appreciate what we have done. And I will also say that the World Bank should do a lot for, should engage the younger generations of Nigerians, especially those that are in their teens and early 20s, who will mature by the time the debt is about to be paid. Uh, people in their 60s and 70s have very little time to live. As such, investment in the younger generation is very much necessary. And uh, on a lighter note, it's good to consult younger generations when you are collecting money on their behalf. Because they should be able to know what you use the money for and how effective that money was also applied in the very areas which it was documented on paper. So we will still invite you because we, there are informations we still need from you. Uh, because what you say matters most to people within and outside Nigeria. Uh, you are divorced from our local politics and uh, local issues. And you will look at things from a different perspective. And uh, what you will see uh, will be read as being free from politics and political and partisanship. So I, on behalf of this committee, uh, thank you very much for your presence. And uh, certainly, as we hear from the other arms of the government, we would also still want you back here. And we wish you uh, a good stay in Nigeria and success uh, in your assignment. And I hope you are going to be one country director of World Bank that is here in our history, that has contributed at a very time when we are facing very serious challenge. And um, I wish you safe trip back home.